Hey, everybody. We're here live on Facebook. We are so excited to be here to bring you high tech virtual presentations. If you are tuning in, hey, let us know in the comments that you're there. I would love to hear what's going on with you all. Graham Newell, this came about because you actually got in touch with me about coming out to do your NSA chapter. And then when we talked on Zoom and I saw your setup, I was so impressed by what you had going on that I thought, oh my goodness, I need to find out, uh, I need to find out more. Let's do a session together. And so there you go. We, uh, and here, here we are. <laughs> Yeah, and here we are. We've got Sherry tuning in, a marketing teacher from New Jersey. Um, if you're coming in, let us know where you're tuning in from. We would love to hear from you. Um, let's see. Rose is here watching from the Philippines. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. David, looking forward to this from beautiful Vancouver. Lovely. We're both like pining because actually both uh, both of us, Graham and myself, are both uh, Canadian. Team so, Canuck, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we promise to keep the, uh, the uh, Canadian commentary to a minimum, though. There won't be a lot of that. But uh, let's go ahead and just get get started. And we'll uh, we're going to hear from you all um, as we go along. We'd love to have your questions, love to have your comments. I see everybody's kind of loading up now. Um, Kendall here from Saskatoon. Welcome, Kendall. Uh, Peter's here. Hang on a second. Let me just show these. Uh, Peter's here from New North Carolina. Uh, Tom's here from Calgary. Welcome. We've got Sean here from Mission Vejo. Hopefully I said that right. Excuse me. Uh, Mary from Delaware, welcome. I'm just so thrilled that you're all here. So, okay, here's what we're gonna do today, everybody. We are streaming live on Facebook. And uh, if you have any questions, you can definitely throw them into the comments and we're gonna pop them up on the screen as you've seen. We are going to um, share with you lots and lots of ideas, but I caution you not to get overwhelmed with the technology. Pick one or two things that you might be able to add to the mix. We're going all in on this. So what Graham's going to do is he's going to do kind of a live demo of his pr program, which will kind of tell you what he does in his in his normal day job. And then we're going to kind of unpack it and show you what he did with the technology. So Graham, why don't you uh, take it from here? Sounds great. James, first of all, thank you for letting me get my tech daddy geek on today. <laughs> I tell you, I bought all this gear, spent all these years getting all this equipment. And anytime I can show off my baby, it is my favorite thing to do. So, you know, I, I get a chance to hopefully geek out and share a few tips with your your uh, our, our Facebook Live viewers today to, you know, really make this technology stuff something a little more interesting. Because like you said, it can be so incredibly intimidating to, mm -hmm. to do. So let me start just by kind of showing you a little bit more about, about what I do. So right. I'm a nurse science researcher and I've got an expertise in behavioral economics. So what I do is I show people how to make smarter decisions using brain science. So I've spent years doing neuroscience testing for financial services industry. So what you're looking at here, this is actually a bank ad and that splotch with the green in the middle, that's actually eye tracking where people are looking. The graphs along the bottom and the right are tracking the brain activity of the people that are actually watching this ad. So what we're doing is I put EEG headsets on people and then I show them sales pitches and marketing and all these kinds of marketing materials and websites and stuff. And then what's neat is we can look right inside their brain at very specific parts of their brain that light up. So we use things like eye tracking technology and we can see exactly what grabbed people's attention. We also, we, then we can then tweak the message to make it a lot more effective. And that's, that's what we really work on, is helping people to understand exactly how their messaging is working and how it doesn't work. We use things like eye tracking technology, and we can see exactly what customers are looking at while they're experiencing our product. Little known fact, when we experience an emotion, our pupils dilate. What's neat is we can measure that and we can tell exactly how the people re reacted. We also use something called facial coding technology. And what we can do is read the micro expressions on people's faces. And we can tell the exact moment when they stopped connecting with our pitch or they got bored or distracted. 
We also use this facial coding technique to gauge people's deepest emotional reactions as they interact directly with websites and with people. So what's neat is, is that now we can make smarter financial decisions and it just isn't about gathering all the best hard data. What I'm able to do with this system is to show how the subconscious emotions can tempt people to slip up. What this does is it drastically increases the amount of certainty that we can have. No more guesswork. And that's the exciting part. We can save millions in catching bad sales pitches and presentations before they actually happen. So as you notice here, I've got a lot of cool, neat video technology and stuff that, that I want to show off. So this is what the system really allows me to do here. So I've used Zoom for years, and the good news is it's really gotten a lot better just in the last little while. So what this does is this gives us things like the great meeting planning and the sharing and all the security of traditional meeting software. But if you've been to a lot of these meetings, what you know is it ends up looking like this, right? Just you and a bunch of talking heads and you're just trying desperately to sneak off and check your email so that you don't have to do this. There's really not much engagement to these. So what I did was kind of rethought how this needed to be done a few years back. So what we did is we looked at the world of live streaming. These are the systems that power rock concerts on Instagram and Facebook Live. So it allows us to do things like fast switching and we can do picture in a picture. But what this gives us is the full production capacity that makes this stuff a lot more exciting. So here's what the studio looks like. What we've got here is a whole series of components that I'm going to go over with you today and show you exactly how each one of them work. It starts with a video playback deck. This is just a simple computer. Now then, I've got my PowerPoint presentation right here. I'm able to slide through all those slides one after the other that have video on them. I've got a monitor to see exactly what's going on in our platform here. And then if you look, there's a teleprompter there where you can see all the notes that, that I have. I've got a switcher that I use. And then I've got a playback deck, extra cameras, and it all runs out of something called a Blackmagic web presenter. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Got an audio board that I can use. So what's neat is, is that when you combine the live streaming tech with the webinar tech, what you can get is an experience that's a lot more engaging. So we can create a real online experience that's very personal, but it still has those kind of online values. Now, one of the things that I can do is play video live. Hold on. And I can stop it and say, wow, that was really neat. And I, here, here's something really cool about it. Then I can go back to the online presentation and I can show people very specifically the things that worked or didn't work in, in their work. So I try in my in-person um, sessions to make them really personal. I do a lot of a fun and engaging stuff. Now, most of what I do during my on-site presentations is I do hands-on games. And I do that with the whole audience. So they swap and they trade and we give away prizes. And I get the whole audience voting and you know, participating in these fun activities. And this is the real thing that we've got to do with online as well, because those talking heads are deadly. So the way that I look at it is I am not doing a presentation. What I'm doing is a big hour of games is what, what I'm doing. And this is what you want to do online. It's not a presentation. It's an hour of fun and games. And if you've done your job right, everybody's going to have this wonderful video going by. They're going to interact with other people. They're going to get a chance to meet everybody in, in the room. So the games teach very important lessons. The audience, they're going to have fun while they learn is what they're going to do. And this is the kind of thing that makes a real difference in getting people to actually remember what you did. When it's experiential, when it's not just sitting there, it's something that's going to be so much better. Now, we have the tendency to think of the limitations that we have when we're in an on-site presentation. So we're up on the stage. At that point, we, we have a hard time oftentimes interacting with the audience, especially if it's a big one. Well, these Zoom sessions and these, these sessions that we can do with these online streaming studios, they give us an opportunity to meet with everybody in the room. We can do interactive things that we could never do in person. So we often think of it sort of a less than, but it's really not less than, it's really more than. I can do much more powerful presentations where people meet each other, where they have deeper interaction and they have more fun when I use online than I do in, in person. And a lot of people think the exact way. So what I try to do online is shoot for an interactivity every five to seven minutes is what, what I look for. I also use multiple breakout rooms to make sure that everyone in the presentation gets to meet every person in the meeting as well. Now, in the best sessions like this, I'm going to have everybody in the entire room is going to meet everybody else. They'll have broken out into five or six different breakout rooms throughout the entire meeting. And this technology allows me to, to do that.
It also empowers wonderful interactive presentations, one-on-one -on -one presentations that I can do for, for small groups. Now, what I find is I close about 30% more business when I sell using my video and instead of doing that on, on the phone. I love how it allows me to do a lot of international stuff. I have conferences with people all over the world every single day, and it's increased my international footprint like I never dreamed that I could do. Because I can go to China, you know, then go downstairs, have a little lunch, take a nap, and come back and off to Vietnam after that. It can all be done virtually. And what I find is the Zoom technology is so rock solid that you can usually do that without much problem. So the other day, I, I, was, I heard from Victor Mutai. He's from Nairobi. And he said, I got this great conference and I'd love for you to come and speak. And I said, what's your budget? And he said, I got nothing is what I got. And I said, well, let's see what we can do. So what we ended up doing is we ended up for his Marketers Club conference that was just getting going. I was able to show up and kind of go, I'll do one for you for super cheap because all it's going to be is an hour out of my day. So I did a remote presentation is what I did. And what we did is we actually turned a laptop camera and it just pointed right back at the audience. I could get feedback and I could see all the things that were going on. So Jane, this is the basics of, of what this system's about. Now let me take you through some of the specific gear and I'd love to open it up to the audience to see if they could ask their questions about ways that they can up their game and doing better video presentations that are gonna allow them to have more interactivity and to really gamify and make their presentations more dynamic. It's so what, what this, I, I'm sorry, Jane, go ahead. It, well, I just wanted to stop and, and, and recognize that uh, it could be quite overwhelming for people. And so the goal is to just kind of show you what's possible and for you to kind of pluck maybe one or two ideas that you might be able to incorporate into what it is that you do. I mean, the way that you're doing business, even in general, is interesting. You've got some things that you're going to share with us a little bit later about how you're using all all of this technology. So yes, there's lots of, to unpack here. And I just want to caution the overwhelm because just seeing the setup and as you, as you went through it, um, it, it, it can be a lot for people. So, so be careful, everybody. Let's not uh, get too, too bogged down in a lot of the details just yet. Let's look at one piece at a time. Sounds great, Jane. So let me talk to you a little bit about what this thing is. Despite the fact that there are a zillion pieces of, of equipment here, and it looks as though that there's a myriad of, of things, it's not actually a zillion pieces of equipment. It's really only six main things that we're looking at here. So first of all, what we have is a computer. Now, within any presentation that, that you do, one of the things that, that you do is you feed in a presentation, you feed it to the projector when you're in that room. Well, what I'm doing is here, instead of feeding that video signal for my PowerPoint or for whatever it is that I, that I have um, for my PDFs or whatever, I'm not feeding it to a projector. I'm feeding it to a, to a switcher. So all this thing really is right here is this is really just nothing more than a standard computer that's got a presentation on it. And all I've done is I've loaded up the, the, the slides on it. So what I can do is I can go back now. I just advanced the slide and added another thing. All the animations done right inside of, of Keynote. Now, what I've also done here is I've got the notes for my presentation. Now, let me, let me, let me switch to another camera here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, take it on handheld here and show you a little bit more about this. So what I want you to notice is right now I'm staring right into the teleprompter with my notes. You see that? And the camera is right behind it. So what's neat is, is that I don't even have to memorize my speech. I've got it right here and I can just read it right off the teleprompter and switch back and forth. Now I've got a choice in that I can either decide that I want to switch up and show the meeting so I can look right in the eyes of the people who I am having the meeting with right now, or I can switch and say, hey, no, I'd like to have my, my PowerPoint notes. So all I'm really doing is I'm switching back and forth and I've got a switcher that feeds the teleprompter. One of them has the Zoom meeting that feeds it. The other one has the keynote notes that I can go to it. So what's really great is I can create a presentation. I don't have to worry so much about the memorization because now I can just zip it right out and I'll have those notes that give me that security the, the whole time. 
So that's, that's our second component that we're going for. Now, again, this can be done using a very simple teleprompter. You may want to use this with an iPad or something. You can feed a computer notes. All I've got is a second monitor hooked up to that computer. So this computer right here is actually hooked up to the teleprompter right there. And just like I have multiple screens, what I can do is feed those notes directly to that teleprompter. And the teleprompter is nothing more than a TV, just like you would have with, with any other TV. So next, what we have, Jane, is we have a microphone. Now, the microphone, one of the things that I find is, is that people have a tendency to really use that computer microphone that they have. Typically, what ends up happening is you've got a really hollow sound. And also, if you're using those Zoom technology, Zoom has got to use electronic processing in order to pull out what it hears as sound and gate the mic. And what ends up happening is you get low audio quality. So what you'll notice here is with my microphone here, it's right here, as you can see. I can tap it right there. You'll notice this is a microphone that is about six inches from my mouth. And what's really great about it is when it's that close, it can really pick it up. Now, the microphone that I'm using is this mic right here, a Rode shotgun mic. And this is what is called a cardioid mic. Now, what a cardioid mic does, it actually has a very narrow pickup pattern. So here, with the mic, it's only picking up this portion right here is all that it's picking up. All the background noise that is in and around here, none of that it's going to pick up. So with this mic, one of the great things about it is it has a tendency to cut out room noise and things like that. This is not an expensive mic, something that costs just a little over like $150. But these, these cardioid mics and getting that mic as close as you, you can is the important thing. Now me, I've got mine mounted from the ceiling right here is what you can see. So what I'm using here with my mic, you'll notice here is I've got it, this little thing that goes right from the ceiling and it hooks my mic right into it. It's really easy for this little jack to go right to where I need it. Now you can also do this by mounting your mic on your desk. You can have a small thing that's just right here on, on your desk that'll basically just point right up into the microphone. This allows you to really have a great mic that's close to where you need it to be. So look up for those microphones. As you're putting your, your piece of gear together, it's one of the most important things that you can do, making sure that, that you have that mic. So, Graham, so now, Graham, yes. hold on a second. I'm going to have Jen share the link for the mic onto Amazon. This is an Amazon US link, and Jen is standing by to help. Jen is the leader of the Wealthy Speaker uh, School classes, and she's going to share some stuff here for us. So. If you could do the microphone, that would be perfect, Jen. And we'll just kind of drip these out and then we'll put them all in at the very end. It appears I cannot share any notes myself. Uh, I cannot share any comments. <laughs> yes, so don't worry about it. We'll, we'll also share them all at the end. So, okay, sorry, Graham, continue. Sure. So, um, you know, one thing we've, we've got, we're going to have all of the gear here. So don't worry about writing too much of this down. We're going to have links to all of that for you if you if you want to use that. So there's our, our microphone. So now let's move on to the next part, which is the camera. Now, you can spend a lot or a little on a camera. One of the important things to, to know about a camera is, is that you don't need to buy anything if you're simply streaming with that is over 1920 by 1080. It's overkill your Zoom meeting cannot handle anything more than that anyway. Now, you may want to use this camera to record some video that you would do in the studio, in which case you'll want to buy a, a better camera. Now, the camera that I love is this camera right here. It is a Sony 6400, and it is specially made for, for video. What's really great about this camera is it gives me an opportunity to shoot both out in the field. This is a 4K camera. This is a, a pricey camera though. Costs about $800 if, if you want to get it. But it's got interchangeable lenses. So you can get that really soft and nice look. And that's what we're using right now is I'm looking into another one, one of these cameras, but I'm getting ready to shoot a whole bunch of, of me doing an interview with, with myself stuff that I'm going to use for blog posts. And all that can, can be done with this camera right here. You've got to make sure that it's got an HDMI out so that you can feed your camera directly. But what I like to do is rather than buying a webcam, you know, that might cost you $150, $200 to, to get a good one, I like to go ahead and spend a little bit of extra money and get one here now that I can use to shoot myself at a speech or to shoot my, myself at, at the streaming studio. This is a, a camera that will be very versatile for you and, and will do it for a long time. So Graham, is everything 
being connected through the switcher. We had a question about the mic being connected to the computer. I'm assuming sure. it's all going into the switcher or something like that. Is that right? Correct. The the way that that works. Hang, hang with me, and I'll and I'll go very quickly okay. on exactly how all this is is switched in in in, in just a moment. So here's the, the camera here, the A6400 mirrors from Sony. This is a brand new camera. Oh, and it's just a, got a toasty, wonderful look. It'll, it'll be beautiful for you. It, it really will. So now what we do is, is we, we move on to, to our next piece of gear. And what that is, is that's the switcher. And this is the secret, really, to the entire system that, that we're using here. So what the switcher is, I've got this, this switcher right here. Now, I've actually got the top off of it because it's kind of, I want to keep it cool so the fan doesn't come on. So here it is exactly what that switcher looks like. This is from a company called Blackmagic. Now I use mostly all Blackmagic gear because it's hardware based. Now there are a lot of other platforms that you can use to do switching, platforms like ABS. They're software based, but what I have found is that they're just not reliable enough. This stuff has a tendency to, to go wrong sometimes, and you've got to find the most reliable gear that you can find. So with this switcher, what you can do is you're going to be able to have something that you know you can turn on, and it's not going to crash because the, the software wasn't there. So this has been a, a really good, good deck for me. Now, what I have also here is this is a remote switcher is, is what it is. So with the, the switcher, what you want to make sure you're, you're doing is you're really making sure that it's easy for you to just put your hands on here. And what you'll notice is I can just very quickly, so for example, I can pull up the camera right here, and then without looking, I can simply switch to camera two. And the way that I'm able to do that is because I can just put my fingers here, and I can just memorize where each one, camera one, camera two, and then I've got camera two with me on top of camera two. <laughs> and then I've got straight camera two. Or I can take the video gear, and I can put me in the box with the gear. And I know that all I need to do to get to camera three is bring my finger all the way over to the end and press that button, and lo and behold, it's going to take camera three. So what's neat is I can do this completely without looking. And, and that's what makes it really great. You can just go bang, 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 one after the other. And that's what the, the switcher does. But in order really to make this work, what you've got to have is you've got to make sure that you have this switcher that is now attached to a remote control. So let me talk a little bit about the remote control that, that, I, that I recommend. This is probably the best one that, that we can use. It's called the Elgato Stream Deck. And you can hook this right up to a Blackmagic switcher. And what it's going to enable you to do is it's going to enable you to really see exactly what it is that you are doing at any given time just by feel. So I know that row one, I could just need to press that button. I don't have to, I can load in all my special effects ahead of time. Don't have to worry about creating all of this stuff and then switching it live. I can just press button, button, button. And you see this thing has 32 buttons, so I can do 32 different effects regardless of what, what it is that I, you know, that I want to do. Hey, Graham. So, uh, yes. uh, just, I want to let everybody know that we are going to get to your questions. So I just want you to go through the, the structure of what you guys set up there. And then we're going to pause and we've got a whole stream of questions here. And uh, I'm excited for you to get to those as well. Sounds great. Looking forward to hearing all, all the questions that, that everybody has got as well. So now let's take it back to our final piece of gear. This is going to be our, our recording device. Now, probably the best way, if you're just recording straight video, is to use nothing but simple QuickTime. Now, you can basically set up your computer where you set the camera to go into your computer, microphone to go into your computer, launch QuickTime, and then simply record new movie. And lo and behold, you can record your blog posts or anything. It's going to be able to do that real simply and, and real easily. But what you may want to do is get something that is a bit more, more sophisticated. So for that, what I would recommend is something called the Blackmagic Design Video Assist. This is a 4K recorder. Again, a little pricey. Look at that price tag, about 900 bucks. But man, this thing will record 4K. It is absolutely beautiful, is what it is. So when you hook it up to this, which is the Black the Blackmagic Video Assist, it ends up being something that, that really is great. So this is our switcher. And this is the one that I recommend. It's called the Blackmagic ATEM Mini. Again, there's a little link there if you want to go to it, and the link will be in, in, the, uh, in the notes when, when we get done. 
But what's neat is this switcher can not only create this great content, what it can also do is it can stream out live. So you don't even need that extra deck that does the digitizing. The switcher does it. So there's a brand new one. It's called the Mini. And then there's also the Mini Pro, which is brand new. Now, those are pretty rare. It just came out just a few months ago. And I recommend that, that you probably stick with, uh, with the Mini Pro. So those are the basic components, Jane, that, that, that we have. Basically, these are nothing more that are computers that are playing into a switcher. You know, I've got one for Final Cut Pro. I've got one for my PowerPoint presentation. Then I've just got a whole lot, lot of monitors. So how do I keep it all straight? What, what exactly do I do? Well, what I want you to notice here is that here are my computer notes that I have. And then if I just look up, I can very easily see, okay, there's Jane at the monitor right above so I can track. Yep, I'm still on the air. I'm still okay. Things are still going well. And then I can look up again and then there's the teleprompter. And then I can look up again and there's my camera. I love how see, loosely you use the term basic setup. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But, but this kind of monitor stacking thing, this works really well because what's great is I can very easily just sort of do a little look down and then up and I, I know everything is okay. Yeah. The other thing is I've also, I've also positioned myself a little monitor over here. So this has got all my sources ready to go. And I know it, whether I'm up, I always keep in the corner of my eye that uh, this has got to be up. That's got to be live because if it's not, I know I'm in, in trouble. But it can all be seen from my peripheral vision. Okay. And this is what makes it easier to, to, to control and easier to understand. So we've had just a lovely amount of questions over here. Now, everybody, we are going to share with you the entire list of actually, Jen, if you want to just cut and paste that whole list, we can share it right now and then we'll share it again at the end um, of products that uh, he was talking about. And you're not I don't know. Maybe you have a thing with Amazon. You should. Um, I should. Okay. I don't. But <laughs> okay. get those affiliate links going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I can figure out how to kind of organize these questions. So is it okay if we just kind of go into them? Let's just roll them. That sounds All great. Right. All right. Here we go. Christine is asking. I'm trying to picture how to do games in Zoom meetings. Would love more on this. Thank you. Christine. Sounds great. So, so games in Zoom meetings are all about breakout rooms. So the, the standard formula that, that you want to follow is you present a concept, is what you're going to say. Here's something really cool. And then typically what, what I like to do is to end it with a poll. End it with, with something wh where I, I get people interacting and talking a little bit more ab ab about it. Then what I do is I assign a game. And I'll either do that, that game online, um, in, in, I'll have them play the game in the breakout room, or more so what, what I tend to do is I tend to do it with, with polling. Now you can do polling electronically, but one of the problems with, with electronic polling is it has a tendency to be something that's kind of you know between you and the speaker. I, I want their eyes up. I, I want them looking. So what I usually do is get people to vote using flags. So I have a thousand four colored flags. Now this, that, is, for that, a live, this is for a live presentation. This though. is for a live a live, a live, a live presentation, right. right. But that's what I, that's the same kind of thing that, that I want to do in the meeting. And there's no problem now with polls. You can get people to vote in instantly. So there's all kinds. There, there's, there's Mentimeter that you can use online. Now, instead of using the polls or whatever that, that I do in, in Zoom a lot of times, I'll have a back channel, basically, where I have people with an iPhone or they can bring up a second little window on, on their desktop. And lo and behold, what they can do is go in there and vote. And then I can do clouds and I can do all kinds of polls and meetings and things like that. And then all I do is I simply switch the results. I have a Chrome window up on my computer and bam, I go right to the Chrome window. It shows the results for it really beautifully. And I've got full featured polling that does much more than Zoom does. I love it. All right. Tony is interested in your advice on setting up, managing, and recovering from breakout rooms. So you're sending people into breakouts, and we've just started using this in Zoom and in inside the Wealthy Speaker School, and we are having so much fun with this, aren't we, Jen? Uh, so, so this is a great question. You know, how do you tee it up? How do you, I think you can do it automatically where you just say break them up into three groups or four groups or something like that. And then you send them on their way, but you can communicate them with while they're in there. And there's some fun things you can do to keep them engaged. 
Absolutely. You know, breakout rooms are tough to, to do and you have to really spend your time getting used to them. So one of the things that I'd encourage you to do, first of all, is practice. So get together, four or five of your buddies, and just say, okay, once a week, we're just going to slam each other in and out of breakout rooms, one after the other. We're going to do polls and games, and you just have to get really comfortable with it. The, the, the controls, particularly in Zoom, can be a little kludgy for, for breakout rooms. Okay. A couple of things that, that you want to make sure that, that you do. In Zoom breakout rooms, there's something called the options menu. You want to look at that. It's off to the left whenever yeah. you, you do it. Now, generally, what, what I find is running a breakout room is a full-time thing that is really hard to do, particularly if you're presenting. So what I always encourage you to do, if there's any way that you can do it, have somebody else run the meeting for you. Put right. yourself as the co-host and then bring in a second person that will do nothing but get those breakout rooms all, all teed up for you. Yeah. With your breakout rooms, try to open them. I mean, not actually putting people in the meetings, but start the breakout room process the moment the meeting starts. Ah. And, then, and then basically put everybody in, in the room and then have that open um, piece for you okay. that you're going to be able then to very quickly just go boom and everybody goes into the room and, and they're already pre-assigned. Nice. The other, the other thing that I, that I like to do is, is to have a second login. So basically have a computer that's sitting here right in front of you that is logged into the meeting and that's going to be something nothing but your administration is all it's going to be. But then you've got your main computer that you can look at. It's geared for presentations. But instead of trying to do everything on one computer, open up and put yourself as a guest in your own meeting. And then you can build, you can do this for two or three computers. You may want to have an iPad that just has the breakout rooms. You may want to have a laptop that, that just has the polls. You may want to have another computer that just has something else. <laughs> Break out all the computers that you can. Make that big monitor wall so you've got everything you need. You're funny. Uh, the more computers, the better. Okay. So, and you want to also, when you send people into a breakout room, if you've sent them with an assignment to talk about something, you're able to talk to them while they're in there. You can put post what it is that they're supposed to be talking about and how long they have. And then you can also give them like a one minute warning and things like that. All right, moving on. Sid says, hi, Graham. What are the things that can go wrong that we need to prevent? <laughs> In this situation, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> right. So, so what we know is with, with these meetings, everything can go wrong, right? We, we've all been there where we have that meeting and somebody's audio doesn't work or, or, or somebody logs into our meeting and, and their mic is stuck open and you're like, what? Is this working? And they completely interrupt your, your meeting. So first of all, the best thing that, that you've got to do is practice, practice, practice. Again, with that same group that you're doing the breakout sessions, what you want to do is get online with them and say, okay, I want you to screw up my meeting. I want you to come in and have the audio feedback and I want you to come Come in and do dumb, stupid things. And then you just practice each of you figuring out exactly what that is. Because, you know, I've done hundreds of these. And, and it, what's nice is now that I know pretty much exactly what's going to happen. But even I, I get surprised. So with online presentations, you always want to have yourself a backup. I never do a high stakes uh, presentation that I have not already recorded. Prior to the meeting, I'll record my full presentation, send it to them, put it on YouTube, and send them a video. And I say, if things crash and burn, you just press play is, is what you do. Wow. Because it quite literally is going to happen quite regularly. And this, this is the way that you can absolutely make sure that they're going to get your presentation. May not be quite as live, but you're going to have fulfilled the contract and you're going to have presented something. This technology can be incredibly kludgy. You got to practice and you got to have a lot of backups, which means you got to be ready with backup computers, backup internet, all of those things. Just think through all the things that can go wrong and try to get some redundancy. Beautiful. Wow. I see you have a prompter with slanted glass. Why put the camera behind a one-way mirrored glass and the prompter monitor underneath it so that it projects on the mirrored glass? Correct. So one of the things that, that I have here with my, my teleprompter, let me, let, me, let me just show you what this setup exactly looks like. So I got a cord. So basically, here is my, my computer. What you'll notice is it's, it's back out here and it's shooting through that glass is what it's doing. And what that enables me to do is to look right inside of that camera. 
without any need for me to look away. So what you'll notice is, is when I bring that up, I'm looking right at my notes or I'm looking right at the person who, who is there. So with the teleprompter, the problem is with the notes is you've got to flip the notes because if you put keynote notes in a teleprompter with that mirror showing up, the notes are going to be backwards. And so what you've got to do is you've got to flip it. So let me, let me find my little flipper here. I'll show you this. This is like way above my pay grade. Yeah, th th <laughs> this is just, a, this is kind of, this is a little, but this is called a decimator. And basically you, you feed in the keynote notes, this flips it backwards, and then lo and behold, now you have the notes that are looking great right on the, the screen. But as you, as you mentioned, that glass reflects it and turns everything upside down. Wow, okay. This is quite something. Now, Charles, I'm gonna put his up there again. I might need an intern. And Jane, let me, let, let me give folks some, some advice on this. Yeah, let's talk about it's that. worth the money to get somebody to help you set this up. This mm -hmm. is not easy to, to do. No question, we're doing the advanced co course here. And, and th this is for people that are probably have mastered the, the basics of it. But there's lots of great video folks that can help you do this, where they can help you, you set up these, these streaming studios. Yeah. And it, it, it might cost you a bit in the beginning, but they can build a system for you that, you know, if it brings you four or five extra gigs a year and, and it costs, you know, $10,000, that was worth it. You know, it, it really was because you can use it for, for forever. And one of the things I really like to have during a live presentation, I get very lonely very easily. I don't know, maybe I'm codependent or something. I love to have a sidekick. So even when I'm doing a webinar to launch our school or something like that, Jen is always there with me and she kind of knows that I'm throwing her under the bus all the time and saying, okay, Jen, just post this thing. And I haven't even talked to her about it, but um, it's just so great to have somebody who can kind of look something up on the fly for you and post it in the uh, comments. Um, Pamela wants to know, and Pamela's backdrop looks amazing now, by the way. Hey, um, Pamela. <laughs> yeah, your backdrop is great. Green screen. Talk about what's going on behind you there. Okay, I got a big surprise for Pamela. It's <laughs> not green screen. It's, it's paper. Is all is all is all it really is. So let me show you what 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 this is. So basically, what I have here is this is nothing but a big Venetian blind of paper. You see that? Yeah. And you see, you see that chain right, right there? All I have to do is go and just sort of roll it up just like you would have at Venetian blind. And I've got three colors of paper that, that I can use right, right here. Oh. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of green screen. And the problem is, is that it usually doesn't quite get it. There's always gonna be some little artifacting around your, your, your head or whatever. You know, Jane, I think you've got a really great background. I get a chance to really see you and your, your, I look <laughs> in your way. home. It looks like a great <laughs> place. <laughs> this is just yeah. my office, you guys. Um, yeah, I, I, I've heard Chris West also say that he's not a huge fan of green screen. And uh, so, I mean, it's something to think about. And I think um, a few of my people in my mastermind have set up based on what Chris has talked about and really nice dark colors on your wall can also make for a very beautiful office. I've also seen the opposite. I've seen like all white offices look really nice for these types of things. And so um, let's just make sure that we say there's no one way to do any particular thing. You don't have to have this exact light. Let's talk about what kind of lights you're using. Mary. Sounds one. great. There's Mary. Hello, Mary. Good to, good, good to see you. So <laughs> Mary, I can't tell you how important the lights are. You can have a crappy camera. You, you, you can have a bad mic, but let me tell you, lights are really everything. Now, one of the things that, that I want you to notice is, is that I look incredibly red here. You notice that? I look very flush and very healthy is how, how I look. Let me tell you, man, I am just a pale geek is, is what I really am. I don't look nearly this good, but what I've done is I, I've got some, some really good lighting. So let's talk a little bit about what, what the lights are. These are my lights. And what I want you to notice is they are big, is what they are. They, those things, those suckers are four feet wide, is what are they, they are. L I like to know if they're hot. <clears throat> they are not hot. They are LED lights. And okay. so I've got another light here, is what you'll notice. And again, I've got then 
a background light here, and all this one does is light up my background. And then on the other side, I've got another background light right here. So what you'll notice is, is I've got a complete semicircle of light around me. And my, you know, my, my middle-aged wrinkles are all being flushed out. I don't look nearly this good. You know, I, I am really just sort of a wrinkled old hag of a man, but I got good lighting. <laughs> and that's what we're looking for. You know what, I wanna just compare, just so you all know, I have a little teeny tiny light ring that I'm sure was under a hundred bucks on Amazon. I have a, a Logitech 920 um, web camera. I have my Yeti microphone here and it's on a stack of books in front of me. And I have two screens, that's it. So you can go high tech and do all of these things or you can go low tech and it'll still look pretty good. And I think the big decision for everybody from this is how far do you want to go? Some of you have already gone pretty far down the road and you're doing a great job. And I would just say, uh, you know, just recognize where you want to go. I would say Graham is probably on a scale of one to 10, about a 12. And <laughs> for those of you in NSA who have watched, um, who's the really amazing, Jason Hewlett's video, his is also like a 12. And so you have to decide, I'm okay living at a 7.5, you guys. So this is a this is a decision for y'all to make. Um, and one of the things I want to back up to: where do you buy the backgrounds that are behind you? Uh, Jen was asking me. Let me tell you, I am a big fan of one company that does such a great job. It's called B and H Photo. They're out of New York. Not only will they help you, you know, get the the right gear. You call them up and say, "I've got this, and I don't know what to do, and this is my budget." And that what they'll do is talk you through it and get you the the right stuff. So I'd are, recommend are you that B. About where you buy the blinds that go behind you, the mm -hmm. uh, all uh, most of this gear came from B and H Photo. Is what oh. is is where it all came. And again, the, the links will be be in here. So let me show you these are the lights that, that, that I have and as you can see again a $300 light but you know even if you go to Home Depot and get four shop lights you know and basically put a big half circle of light around it yourself it's gonna make you look good where people really get into trouble is they have one light that's like right on they have these horrible shadows right you know right over here yeah. you want to have that nice flush and you notice I can even hold my hand up and I don't really get any shadows be, be, because there's you know there there's there's light everywhere is what, what it is the other thing is, is I've also done something called a white balance now this is something w with a camera that, that you have to do I have white balance balanced my camera so it's a little blue and what does that do it makes me a little red okay. which makes me look a, a lot better and these LED lights you can dial in the color temperature to exactly what it is that you want to do I was saying to you before we started that on zoom they have a beautiful little checkbox called touch up my appearance <laughs> love that box <laughs> and when I come on to StreamYard, I'm kind of like wow so uh, you have to do a lot of adjustments to make it a little bit better and one thing I will say for any women who are my age I'm in my 50s uh, you're gonna want to make sure you get LED lights because anything else is gonna be just too hot all right. Um, why do I not see the light reflecting in your glasses? Yeah. Now, particularly for those of us who wear glasses, it's one of the hardest things that we have to deal with. There's always, you know, light re reflecting all, all the time. Now, a lot of people uh, get ring lights is what they en end up getting. And you, you've probably seen those. It's basically a big donut is what they do. And then your camera shines through the, the donut is what you have. But unfortunately, if you have glasses, what that means is you're going to have these big circles right here on, on, on your glasses and you're going to look like a space alien. So you really can't use ring lights if, if you are um, if, if you are somebody who, who wears glasses. But what I want you to show you is I do have a glasses re reflection, but I have to do this to see it. Uh, okay. Do you see? Yeah. And so what did I do to actually make sure that, that I don't have that? I put the lights the on light. the ceiling. Uh, gosh. So if you mount the lights on the ceiling, what's going to happen is if you have glasses, as long as you keep your head down, okay, you can't do this, yeah. you're not going to get any re reflection. You're going to have that nice glow. Now, uh, are you in the basement of your home? I'm actually in the attic. And what's, and what's great is I'm, I'm only, uh, you know, this whole setup probably 
from, you know, the teleprompter to, you know, to here is only probably about, you know, 10 or 12 feet. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see, but my exercise bike is back there. You see that? Yeah. You know, that it's all right there. And I got all my, my trashy shelves right here, but nobody ever sees this, you know? So, so, so it's really easy for, for me to just tuck this away with all this gear in, in a nice little corner. It doesn't take a, a lot of room. And you'll notice my seamless is right here. <laughs> you know, it's just right, you know, but behind me, if I lift that up, there's a window and I get I just sort of roll it up and I get a nice breeze going right through my office. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Adrian wants to know, is there a special mount for the iPad to connect it to a tripod? Yes, there is. Those are, those are gettable. Again, you can call B&H Photo and just tell them that you need a, a mount for it. They have them for both iPhone and for I iPad and really easy to, to use. I'm a big fan of, of iPad uh, teleprompters. The other thing with these teleprompters is they actually have software that will actually listen to what you're saying and scroll the, 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 um, the iPad so that it matches your, your voice. It's amazing what you can do now. That's so amazing. Betsy wants to know any classes on how to use the switcher. You know, the, the switcher is, is probably a little bit more of, of, of a technical thing. Now, what's great is these switchers have become so popular that you can usually get great videos off of YouTube to, to use the ATEM switcher. A basic, simple setup does not take a tremendous amount of technical expertise, but you may want to get somebody to, to help you there. And typically what you can do is go on like Upwork or, or go on uh, Fiverr and just say, I need somebody that's a video expert to help me do some setup. And typically they can be your little consultant. You can call all of them and ask questions. There's lots of people that do this. All right. Now, are we ready to kind of switch over to how you use some of these things? And I really want to share some ideas and some things that my clients are doing in terms of how to sell this virtual kind of packaging. And some people are doing a lot more virtual than others in my world. Right. And so uh, do you want to talk about your blog a little bit here or are we ready for that? Sure, let, let's do that. So basically, I'm a video blogger, and and what I really try to do is try not to do written blogs because you know the the written experience is just not a, as dynamic. So the best you is not you in writing. You know, you you may be incredibly smart, but you have the prowess and the expertise to light up a room. You're amazing in person is, is what you are. And so showing yourself in person is one of the most important things that, that you can do. So what I do with my blog is I basically create a PowerPoint presentation. On that PowerPoint pr presentation is all the notes of, of what I want to say. And then what I'll do is I'll put live videos on it. That's what you've been watching here so far with all of those slides that I did at the beginning. It's nothing more than just a bunch of, of notes that I've put in a PowerPoint presentation. The video automatically rolls when I just take my clicker and go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So what I'm able to do now is I have my virtual assistant basically, I write it out in PowerPoint, and then I say, virtual assistant, you know, go, go to Getty Images, buy some good Im images for me that, that I can use for, for my presentation. And then lo and behold, all I do is launch QuickTime right here. Then I, then I get my camera rolling and I switch it live. And all I, all I have to do is just read what's in the teleprompter, slip through the slides one after the other, video blog done, no editing. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, in your blog, is it is it building in terms of numbers? I'm sure some are more popular than others, but uh, what do you think really sells on a blog in the in a video blog format? No question. What what really works with it is, is to be able to you know get it out there in all the places that you need. Standard blog, you know, kind, kind of things. Building your, your list, getting people to, to come in. It, it's no different than, than your written blog. It's just you know if you're coming in and a you know in a in a in your Twitter feed if you, you've got Hootsuite up and lo and behold that they've got hey here's my blog article and what I described. Whereas if it's you on camera flying by and they're going hey you're like you're just going to be distracting. They're just going to notice you is what what they're going to do. Yeah. And with this setup, it's so easy to do video. You can do it as, actually I find it quicker than writing because I can just sort of do highlights and I can just sort of talk, yeah. add the slides to it and lo and behold, a blog post is done. Beautiful. If you want to see some examples, go, go to my website at 602communications.com or grahamnewell.com and there you'll see some video blog examples. Cool. Adrian wants to know, do you send out your video blog as a newsletter or do your followers come to your website in a feed? You know, I do both is what, what, what I do. 
-hmm. primarily for, for me, what, what I, I tend to do is much more on, on social. And, you know, the big thing for, for me is I'm trying to recruit these really high dollar financial guys is, is what, what I'm trying to do. And they don't usually hang out on Twitter very much. They, they usually don't, don't do too much on, on social media. So what I find is with social media or even with, with my, with, you know, coming to my website, it's usually not something that, that I get a whole lot of traction on. So what I've started doing is, is producing blog posts, video blog posts. And then what I'll do is I'll include the people who I want to sell. So let's say, Jane, that I, that I was trying to get a meeting with you is what I do. And I call up and I go, Jane, I know that you're an industry leader in, in widgets. Mm -hmm. And we've done this great blog post ab about widgets. And Jane, as an industry leader, I'd like to make sure you get on, on camera to do this. I'll schedule a Zoom meeting with Jane and I'll go, Jane, give me your best widget tip. And you go, I think it's this and cool and this. And then what I'll do is I'll build a video for a blog post that has them in it. What do they do? They share it with all their friends. I'm seen rubbing shoulders with industry leaders. So I, I play to people's ego a little bit and lo and behold, what ends up, I, I, they see themselves on video and I get to be seen as an industry leader. I mean, Jane, you've done a masterful job of this. Think of all the big time speaker dudes that have been past you in the last few years. I was just honored to be asked by, by Jane to do this because she's an industry leader, but she's done such a great job because she's borrowed borrowing all the fame of everybody else that she appears with. Um, I want to mash up two questions. So Stephen wants to know what the top three tech tips that are easy to figure out that they can walk away with this. And Jen is kind of looking at what are the top one or two or three pieces of gear that you might suggest. What are some easy, what are some low hanging fruit when it comes to this stuff? You bet. So first of all, what I'd recommend, get that good mic. Get that microphone that's going to make you sound like a, a million bucks. Let's share what that mic right. is again, Graham. Sure. Let's let me find that real, real quick. I'll just pull that up. Here is our mic. It's the Rode <clears throat> mic, and I'm a big fan of these. A cardioid mic again. What it's going to be able to do is go is just point right at your mouth. Get that mic as close to your mouth as you possibly can. Yeah, what do you think the amount of space? I mean, I'm thinking this is how far I am now. I, do you think that's about the right amount of space? I was debating whether or not to get an arm for it, but I really don't love the look of an arm in front of my face. That's kind of not my what I'm after. So I just propped it up on some books and I'm thinking about leaving it just here like this. So I'll have yeah. to do my podcast team to make sure yeah. it's quality enough because yeah. they thought I was a bit too far away from my mic. It, it, it works well. And, you know, I am such a huge fan of Use the Ceiling. I mean, look look at all the stuff that oh, I have, I love that. you know, attached to my I'm ceiling. Really high. You know? I'd have to have mm -hmm. like the longest arms ever to get down this low. That's so funny. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you know what? What's great is you know it keeps this pretty clear. You know, there's not a whole lot of clutter on here, and I got room to move and gesticulate yeah. and not knock things over. So, oh Troy, I'm glad you reposted this because I was uh, there was somebody earlier who had asked about a body shot. If I need to move from up close to far back in order to get my whole body on the screen, what do I do with the mic? Like, how do you accommodate when you're doing standing presentations? Are you just adjusting it up and down? Versus you know what what with, with me uh, what, what I do is I've, I've got a medium shot and then I've got a, a tight shot um, for for me let, let me show you what, what I'm doing I've got a kind of a limited ceiling height so one of the things that I do is I actually use a kneeling chair oh cool. and it looks like I'm standing but I'm actually not oh. see it keeps my back straight oh uh, yes yes very nice. Yeah. And you've got no chair behind you, so it looks like you're. Oh, you're so sneaky, Graham. <laughs> yeah. So, so that so that works out re really well. The okay. other thing that I'd re recommend, as far as the the audio setup, is one of these. So this is basically a flush earpiece, and what you'll notice is is it clips right onto the back of my shirt here, so that it stays out of the way. And then when I when I come around. I've got no mouthpiece, nothing around me, and, and it's real easy. So let me let me show you exactly what, what this is. Here is our piece of gear. This is a Shure sound oscillation hear, earphone is what it is. And, and it, it, you notice what it does is it just goes flush right against the ear, and it ends up looking, looking really great, about $99. 
And so what I've got here is the microphone that is pick the microphone that, that is picking up my audio and then playing back in in the earpiece. So and Zoom doesn't have to do any kind of processing. It right. keeps it where I can hear really well. And so if you're moving back to be able to get your whole body in, you would just move the microphone back with you, would you not? What I would do is if you've got to have that that two shot, I'd switch to a different microphone. I'd get a lavalier mic okay. because that's going to be much much better. You know, no question, the mic that I have is much better quality, and I think you'll you'll probably hear that this is a pretty good mic. Lavalier is going to pick up. It's an omnidirectional mic. It's going to pick up a lot of things. Is is what it's okay. going to do. So all right, so one, the, For, Bonita, I want you to show the chair again, please. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, the 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 actually the, the chair is called a kneeling chair. Kneeling. If you simply look that up on on YouTube on excuse me on um, uh, on uh, Amazon there's tons of them and and it's a it's it, it's a great way to you know to rest yourself yet have the energy of standing so uh, can this work for two people at the same time I guess you'd probably both need to be mic'd maybe individually that way or something Correct. You know, and particularly if you get the right microphone, a lot of times two people can go with one microphone, particularly if you're back a little ways, you'll be able to pick up both people. Okay. But a lavalier would probably be the better way to go with that. Okay. And I have diva microphones that uh, look really pretty and, and come across your face. Okay. So um, Betsy was asking, can we uh, send an email? Um, this is streaming. So we don't have any of your email addresses. Um, although I do have yours, of of course, Betsy, but um, Jen just shared the entire list in the chat box of WET, and we'll also share it again at the very end. The video, if you'd like to come back and analyze this and study it, because there is so much to unpack here, the video will be on the Facebook page where you signed up. So you're able to go back and get the video. We're also going to put it over. Uh, Graham can share it on social media, but we'll also put it over on my YouTube channel. So just search Jane Atkinson on YouTube and you will see my channel with lots of videos. We did a four week brand camp using this platform in um, April and all four weeks are inside a playlist on the channel. And for anybody who's, uh, I would say an intermediate to seasoned speaker, you're going to love it. Now let's show you a fun little, um, let's go ahead and share the StreamYard link too. This is what we're using today is StreamYard. And if anybody is interested in uh, uh, signing up for that, I think you get a $10 discount or something like that. Uh, Jen will share the link with you. But if anybody would like to get in touch with Graham, actually, hang on a second. It looks like I need to take a comment down first. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, Graham is willing to help. G Newell at 602communications.com. And let me go back into, oh, <laughs> that's funny. I did the wrong one. Use banners to summarize your talking points and display calls to action. If anybody would it's like- live TV. <laughs> if anybody would like to set up a 15 minute call um, with me, I do an introductory call to talk to you about what's going on in your business and how you can build your business. Now, before we go, I do wanna talk about um, virtual packages, because I think it's really important that y'all get creative with what it is that you're putting out there. We have a lot of clients now who are packaging up, say, a virtual workshop or something that's kind of deep divey, maybe a Q&A session, maybe a roundtable discussion with a bunch of executives. And then at the end of the package is a live event somewhere out in the future to be played later. So if you've already got deposits for clients that you're going to be bumped out for, see if you can't upsell them to a virtual plus live combo package and put the things in there that you love to do. So wouldn't you say, Graham, that you must love all of this or you wouldn't obviously do it? You bet. And, you know, the way that, that I sell it, you know, I, I don't go in and kind of go, yeah, I've got some kind of crappy virtual thing that I couldn't we couldn't do the in person. And, and would you take it, please? Yeah. What I go is thank 
God this happened because now we can bring the whole virtual world to you and it's going to be amazing. We can do things that we could never do in person. We're going to have breakout rooms and games and we're going to have virtual stuff. We're going to bring in people that couldn't come and I'm just so excited we got this opportunity to do this. <laughs> I love your enthusiasm. Uh, Bonita was just asking how to set up a 15 minute consult with me. Jen just shared the link. Um, there's a link right there into my calendar. So thank you so much for uh, asking that question. So Graham, my goodness, you shared so much in this hour. I'm so grateful for you. Can y'all show him some love on the, um, on the screen here? Thank you, uh, Pamela, for coming in. I know, I know you're pretty much there on your setup. Um, you're so smooth in your transitions. It's so amazing that I even thought at first I was watching a recording that had been edited. You're awesome. <laughs> wow, that's quite the compliment. I love that. Yeah, thanks to everybody for coming out today. We really appreciate you. And um, the replay, by the way, Christine, will be right on the Facebook page where you're watching today. You know how when you're streaming on Facebook and it's live, then it just goes straight into video and you've got it right there. So you can go back and study it again and again. And you guys share it with your friends. We would love for you to share it. Thank you so much, uh, Graham, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. Jane, thank you for having me on. This has been my dream to be on The Jane Show. So I am so excited. I appreciate you giving me the honor. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> and uh, with that, we will say see you soon, Poppy Speakers. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks, y'all.